Hi Aries, welcome to August. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. So this month, your ruling planet Mars is stirring up some uh, trouble at the beginning of the month when it conjuncts Uranus and the North Node in Taurus. Um, that will be on August 1st. Then we have Mercury moving into Virgo on August 5th. We have a full moon in Aquarius, which is favorable to your sign on August 11th. Venus moves into Leo August 12th. Your ruling planet Mars moves into Gemini at the end of the month on the 21st. And then Uranus goes retrograde on the 24th, and we end the month, uh, and the sun moves into Virgo, and we have a new moon in Virgo as all the energy shifts into Virgo at the end of the month um, on the 24th as well. So at the same time we have this new moon in Virgo, Uranus will go retrograde. And we'll talk about that later. Let's see what the cards say. For Aries, what does Aries need to know about love and relationships for the month of August? What is coming up for Aries? What is coming up for Aries for August 2022? What do we need to know? Queen of Swords, the Star, the Three of Swords in the past, the Queen of Cups, the Six of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, the Four of Swords, the Hermit, the Nine of Wands, and the Empress, and the card at the bottom of the deck, is the King of Pentacles. Okay, so, with the Queen of Swords energy, this could be your energy as the first card. Um, you're feeling kind of emotionally detached. You come into the month. Um, if this is your energy, you may be having walls built up around you where you're not, you're wanting to be independent. You don't need anyone. You have this attitude of, I can take care of myself. And that's because of you might have gone through a breakup or some type of heartache. You have the Three of Swords in the past and the Queen of Cups, which is someone that's influencing you, that's passing out of your life, possibly. Um, if the Queen of Swords is a person, you might be dealing with someone who is kind of um, very strict or judgmental or hard to reach in some way. You may feel that this person's too hard on you in some ways. Um, but I feel like this is more your energy. I think you're looking to the future and you've, you're kind of like trying to heal from the past. I think you're in healing mode this month. But there are a lot of people around you that are helping with your healing. I don't think you're doing it alone. Even though you may feel that way, there are people that want to help you. And you have the star crossing this energy. The star gives hope. So if you've been through a difficult time, you could be coming out of it with the help of others this month. Because the Three of Swords, it, again, it means heartache. And a lot of times with the Three of Swords, um, both people are suffering the separation. It's like you may be feeling sorry about something that happened, um, but the other person's hurting too. It's not like you're the only one hurting. So I feel like both people are feeling a sense of loss or hurt. And the Queen of Cups energy, this could be someone who's very sensitive, very compassionate, uh, maybe even a little psychic. You could have been dealing with someone like that, maybe someone who's very watery in their personality, um, very, you know, someone who is always there to help people. Anyway, this energy is, is leaving, so maybe um, it's possible that you're losing the support of this person. Their compassion is waning. And the Six of Pentacles coming up in the future, that is about, it's about give and take. So it's possible that there was a breakup in a relationship because of an imbalance in the give and take. 
where one person is doing all the work and the other person's not really um, doing anything or taking advantage of a person. Like either one of you is paying all the bills or giving, you know, putting all the energy into maintaining the relationship and the other person's not. And so that could be one of the reasons why this relationship fell apart. That's indicated by the Three of Swords. Now, the interesting thing, you have the Queen and the King of Pentacles in the reading. And the Queen is coming up in the future. So it's possible, and the Queen is looking to the past. So it's possible that someone from the past is thinking about you. Um, and when you have the Queen and King together of the same suit, um, it can represent a very a compatible relationship. We're, but uh, the focus of the relationship is on security something stable. So you're both wanting to create something stable. If you're looking for love this month, you're wanting to create stability. You're wanting someone, you know, especially financial stability. Um, and also you're connecting with home and family because you have the Empress here as the outcome. So you want someone that's going to be into you. You want to create a home and a family with someone and something that's secure. Now you have the Four of Swords here in your fear sector or your negative thinking sector. The Four of Swords is like taking a time out to rest, to heal. You also have the Hermit in your environment. So the Hermit is about um, possibly going to someone for counseling or advice. Um, taking time out to think about what you want in a relationship. Is this person right for me? What type of person do I need if, if the answer is no? Um, so you're, you're really kind of, um, having like a time out. I don't think the relationship is totally over. I think it might just, for some of you, if you've broken up with someone or you're having some difficulty, it's more of a time out than a total ending. You know, we're not seeing the Ten of Swords or the Tower, you know. So, um, I feel like there's still kind of, there's still a connection there. You might just be needing time out to think. Especially because the Nine of Wands is here. The Nine of Wands is about not giving up. It's about being battle-weary. So you might be struggling with something, um, possibly a health issue because you have the Four of Swords here. But if not, maybe you're just tired and you just need a time out. Maybe if you've been arguing with someone or you've been having struggle with someone, you just need time to think and regroup so that you could approach the situation again. Because um, the Nine also represents, so on the one hand it says, okay, I'm battle weary, I, maybe I should just give up. Maybe this is too difficult. Maybe we're not right for each other, you know. Um, but on the other hand, it's saying, if you just give it one more try, like you're at almost there, you're at, you know, the Nine of Wands, when you get to the Ten, the struggle is over and you've achieved your goal. If, and so you go through the gauntlet of hard work and struggle and, you know, frustrations. But when you get to the 10, you're over. So you're almost near the 10. It's almost saying, like, don't give up because you're really close to resolving the situation. And if some, sometimes people quit before they succeed, you know, just before they're about to succeed. And this is in your wish fulfillment sector. So I feel like you, if there's a goal that you want to achieve in this relationship or in relationships in general... Don't give up. So even if you're not in a relationship, but you're like looking for one and you may feel like, oh, it's too difficult. I can't meet anyone. I feel like there's a hope. It may take a while to get there because the star promises, you know, realizing your goal, but it's not an immediate thing. It's not like tomorrow you're going to get it. So with Aries, you know, because Aries has a tendency to be impatient, you may give up too soon. You may be thinking like, oh, this isn't happening quick enough for me. I'm just going to give up. The Nine of Wands also um, is saying that something that you thought was resolved was over. Like you may have already given up on a relationship. You may think like, oh, this relationship's over. I'm done. It's done. And you're, you know, nursing your wounds. But the Nine is saying it's not over, that there might be a re another round um, with this person. And so I feel like someone is, because I see this queen facing the past, um, she's looking at the past. So someone's thinking about you. And if you want to reconnect, uh, and this could be male or female, someone may be reevaluating the relationship. Maybe they're thinking they just need a time out. 
to think and to see what your reaction is going to be or to see what you do. But so I feel like you're going to come, you might reconnect at some point. And it may be like not in August, maybe more in the, like, it could be August, but you may not resolve things until later on, like September, uh, sometime in September, maybe. And then the, the outcome is the Empress, which is a card of abundance and fam, home and family. The Empress is the mother card. It's um, creativity. It's the fruition, you know, the results of your work. It's harvest. So that's why I'm saying more like fall, September, October, maybe you'll be reconnecting and say, okay, let's try again. Let's try to work out the problems. Um, because I think you both want the same things and you're both compatible but you have to resolve the imbalance. You both have to meet each other halfway and give energy to the relationship. Like it's not, it can't be one person doing all the work. You have to, you know, so if you're the one who's not doing the work, you need to step up to the plate. If you're the one who is doing all the work, you need to communicate that to the other person. Like, hey, I need you to do this, this, and this. I need to feel valued. You know, we need to work something out where we both feel valued and heard and seen in this relationship. And I feel like with the Empress and the Star in the reading, you can achieve some type of closure or some kind of fair, a good outcome if you put the work in. But this is the key, this Six of Pentacles, this imbalance and the give and take. Maybe one person was being more compassionate, um, kind of like being more codependent, always being there, always fixing things, always taking care of things, and the other person was just taking the energy of taking. So if you can work that out, I think that there's hope. Another thing with the hermit is don't feel like you're all alone, that you have nobody that cares about you because that's just a feeling that you're going through. You you know, But you, you do have people around you that want to help you that are there for you. You just have to reach out. You have to reach out. You have to break the ice. So let's see what the um, angel cards have to say. What advice do the angel cards have for Aries? For this for August. Let us see what's coming up for Aries. One thing I will say about the, the Pentacle couple, if you do connect with someone this month, it will bring it may not be very exciting, but it will be very stable. You will both have, you know, because Pentacles are about financial security, stability, you know, something tangible. Um, so it could mean like you're sharing a home together or you're building a home or a family together. Okay. Judgment. Okay, so you have judgment for August. Let go of your fear of being judged. You are good enough. It's time to unlock all that you have kept safely locked away in your heart. Your true essence and potential has been restricted by structure and method for so long, for long enough. There is no right or wrong way. Just be you. And you are okay just as you are. I'm adding that. Um, so let's see what the astrology has to say for Aries. So you start the month off. We have like very explosive energy at the beginning of the month because Mars is conjunct Uranus and the North Node in Taurus. And that happens in your second house. So there could be unexpected developments around money the things that you value, your self-esteem. Um, with Uranus, you never know. Like you, could, you can only, you can know for sure that something unexpected may happen. Um, Mars in Taurus in the second house, maybe your expenses are going up, or something about something. Um, you have to. There's a money situation you have to take care of. So if you're not making enough money, you may have to take action to bring in more money or and with Mars you're gonna have that energy Mars gives you the energy um, sometimes Mars in the second house um, can increase your expenses and with Uranus in the second house your finances are fluctuating they're up and down so if you have some kind of investments maybe you know like one minute they're high next minute they're low there could be some financial instability um, now, at the full moon, 
which is in Aquarius, we're having a full moon in your 11th house. And that's the house of friendship and the groups that you belong to, your goals, your dreams. So you have the moon in the 11th, the sun in the 5th. The sun is your ego. You're wanting, like, the 5th house is the house of fun. So something is coming to completion or coming to a head. That Now, this full moon is going to be on the um, 11th of August. So you're going to hear... You're going to have this um, crisis of the Mars, Uranus, North Node. Now, the North Node being there, it's telling you what you need to do to establish a secure financial future. The second house is about money. It's about what you need for security. Uh, it's also self-esteem. Have you been settling for too less, for too little? You know, what do I need to feel secure Am I good enough? Part of it, you know, is you may be doing negative self-talk, like, oh, I can't ever make this much money in my career, or I'll never get the love I need, or I'll never have the house or the, a secure home. So if you're doing that, stop. You have to start valuing yourself. Like, hey, if you're in a job and you're not being paid enough, you have to start saying, you know what? I do deserve this raise. I do deserve more money. I have skills. I, you know, so you start to, you have to value yourself. And this year is Mars, it's like, it's kind of setting a fire under your butt to, to realize, like it's a wake-up call. I see it as a wake-up call um, to free yourself from any limitations. Um, because Uranus is also um, squaring Saturn. It's going to come, you know, it, it has been squaring Saturn all year. It kind of moved away from that aspect, but it's going to come really close again. So you have to think about what are my limitations? Um, what's holding me back from achieving my goals and my dreams, from connecting with my soul tribe? Um, has there been anything or anyone stopping you? What, what are my fears? Saturn is fear, restriction, problems with authority figures. Um, so, and Uranus wants you to break free of those fears so that you can be your best self. And Mars is giving you that energy. Mar you already had Mars in your sign. Now it's moved into Taurus. So, it gave you the energy to be you, to see who you are, to put yourself out there. Now it's a, it's activating your second house. Okay, I know who I am. Now what am I worth? And let me take action to make sure I'm getting everything I deserve. So with the sun in the fifth, anyway, the full moon is squaring Uranus. So there's, con there's tension here between a friendship between what, and romance, because the fifth house is children, romance, fun opposing the moon and Saturn in the 11th. So you may feel like your friendships or the groups that you belong to are too restrictive. Maybe there's someone that's you feel judged by or you feel they're too being they're too harsh with you, they're expecting too much from you. Um, there could be some arguments over money, financial support. So if you're looking for financial support from someone, a friend, a group, there could be some difficulties around that you have to overcome. Now, the good thing is Mars and all these planets, Mars, uh, Mercury, and the North Node are trying, are in trine aspect. And Mercury's in your sixth house. You're going to come up with ideas, uh, but you need to speak up. I feel like this is a time of communication where you need to speak up about what you need especially in a work situation. If you're not getting paid enough, maybe you need to speak up. It may not be an easy conversation. You're going to get some pushback from authority. But if you can prove what your value is, you might also, they might change their mind and say, oh yeah, you know, this person is worth more. Um, but nevertheless, there will be challenges with Saturn. But now you have Venus. Venus is trining Neptune this month. so And it's in your third house. So Venus trying Neptune, it's a good time for reaching out to friends for support and love. It's a good time to reconnect with family members. They're going to be very compassionate and sympathetic to your situation. So you may be reconnecting with family and friends this month. And um, it could be really wonderful with Neptune. Maybe you're doing something creative with them. Or um, if you wanted to reconnect with family and friends... The relationship, like wherever Venus is, it brings harmony and grace and good feeling. So you could be having better relationships with your family and with your friends because the third house is siblings, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, and the 11th house is friendship. 
Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. It's fourth and twelfth. This is, okay, so Venus in your fourth house. Forget what I just said. I was looking at the wrong chart. Um, Venus in the fourth, you're fixing up your home. You're wanting harmony in the home. Neptune in the twelfth is you're doing a lot of soul searching. So this is a month of thinking about how can I bring greater harmony to my home life? How can I feel? And Neptune in the twelfth is what do I need to release? What kind of baggage do I need to release? Do I have any psychological blockages that are stopping me from creating this happy home? You have an opportunity to create that, to create a home that also has some kind of spiritual component to it. Um, you still have Pluto in your tent, so you're on fire with Pluto. Pluto is bringing you, you, you could really change your life at this when Pluto goes through the tent. You have an opportunity to really transform, to rise from the ashes and be a new person. But you may have to, with Neptune in the 12th, you may have to deal with some psychological issues. And if you can do that, so counseling would be a good thing this month to get at those psychological issues that have been stopping you from receiving the love that you need, receiving the money that you deserve, creating a happy home for yourself. If you could work on that, by the end, you know, you can work toward that goal and achieve it. Um, let's see, Mars is squaring Saturn and trining Pluto. So Mars trying Pluto gives you the energy and the ambition to take action. Mars squaring Saturn, you may feel like you have a lot of hurdles to overcome. Um, but that doesn't mean failure. It just means you have to just work harder. And Saturn usually rewards hard work. So don't be discouraged by any obstacles. You can get through them. I feel like you can. Um, at some point at, around this full moon, Venus is also opposing Pluto. Um, so you have Venus in the 4th opposing Pluto in the 10th. There's going to be some power struggles or some um, manipulation. It, it, you have to have work-life balance. You might be moving into a position of power at work, and it's going to affect your home life. Or you might be dealing with powerful people in your job, um, and you have to take care of your family. So there's going to be some challenge there. We have to meet in the middle. Um, just avoid dealing with any issues that come up. Avoid using manipulation or abusing power in some way to deal with the situation. You want to just be transparent. You want to communicate but you don't want to manipulate. Okay, so stay at, if you're the one doing, you know, doing the manipulation, if you're not the one doing the manipulation, you might be dealing with someone else who is. So don't fall for manipulation either. Then we have a new moon in Virgo, and that's in your sixth house. The sixth house is your house of work, your day-to-day -day environment, your work environment. It's also the house of health. So you could have, if you're, if you're not working, you could have a new beginning in health where you're taking better care of yourself. If you are working, um, it's also a new energy coming in where you may be more focused on the details. You might be doing work where there's a lot of detail, a lot of research, a lot of... Um, you just have to pay attention to the details, but you have a chance to have a new beginning in that area. It's squaring Mars in the third... So there could be some tension with Mars. When Mars is in the third, Mars now has moved out of Taurus, which is in your second house. So that should ease up your financial situation. And now it moves into the third, which is your house of communication. So you want to be careful at this new moon. Um, how are you communicating at work with your co-workers? Because it's squaring the sixth house. And you may be coming across too forceful or too, too harsh with your communication style. So, uh, it's, and it, even if you're, ch and also with communication with relatives, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, share your ideas. You may have many ideas, you may have differing viewpoints, but don't be a bully. Don't, you know, be careful because sometimes we don't, we're not aware of it when Mars is in the third house, how we're coming across. We may just feel like, well, I'm just being passionate, I'm expressing my ideas in a passionate way, and other people feel like you're attacking them. So just be wary of that. Now, at the same time, Mars is trining Mercury in your seventh house. And Venus has moved into Leo in your fifth house. So there could be some opportunities for romance, even love. You might hear from someone um, that you haven't talked to in a while. 
and you have an opportunity to talk about what went wrong and to make things right. Um, Venus in Leo is great, but it's, you know, she represents fun and it's also fun with children. Fifth house is children, creative projects. So you could be getting involved in a creative project. You'd be starting a new romance. But Venus is squaring Uranus and Saturn at this new moon. Um, so it, there is some limitation. There could be some sudden developments. Again, with the second house around money, because Uranus is there. So you may get an unexpected opportunity to make money through some creative project or through a new relationship or through some, maybe one of your children. Um, there's also, there's going to be a lot of responsibility connected with this new moon. So you may feel like, okay, this is great. I'm starting this new romance, but I've got all this work to do. I have all these commitments and I don't know if I have the money to do everything I want to do. You know, so there, there could be some challenges in that way. But um, still, Venus in the fifth is a good is a good aspect, and Mars will be. Let's see what else is happening. So this full this new moon is squaring Mars. That's the major aspect, but it's also sextiling Jupiter, and you've got Jupiter in the first house. Jupiter is still in Aries, giving you support, um, helping you to get out there and giving you opportunities. So you're going to have opportunities for new beginnings, especially around health or work. You could be starting a new job or starting a new health regimen. Um, when Jupiter's in the first house, sometimes you have trouble. Um, you, you tend to gain weight because you're overdoing it with food. Um, so just watch that. Mercury is your friend. Mercury's opposing Jupiter, so you have to be careful. Okay, so Mercury has some positive aspects and some difficult aspects. Mercury is trining Mars and Pluto, so it's a good time to speak up about um, what's going on in your life. It's a good time to communicate your needs. Where's Mercury? Mercury's in, especially in a relationship. So if you've had a falling out, it's a good time to talk about it and discuss where is this relationship going. The only thing you have to be careful with, because Mercury is opposing Jupiter in your first house, that you don't overdo it. Don't go over the top. Jupiter is not really a negative aspect, even in a square or an opposition. But it has a tendency to lead to excess, overdoing. So that's great when Jupiter is bringing in more money or more opportunity, you know. But it's not great, like if you're communicating, maybe you're saying too much. Or maybe you're being too, um, with Mercury and Libra, maybe you're compromising too much. So you have to kind of find a balance. Don't go over the top. Don't take on too much also. Venus, again, we talked about that. Square Uranus, square the North Node. So, um, my main thing, I think, is you're going to have a lot of new opportunities to have more fun, to connect with, to, do, to be more creative, to connect with your children, but it may cost more than you think, and you may be limited by money, not having the money to do everything you want to do. So that's going to be another thing that's going to say, okay, I need more money to do this. I really want to do this, but I need more money. Do I just stop, cut my activities out? Or do I start working towards bringing more money in? There's two ways to look at that problem. Like if money is an issue, maybe I need to just earn more money so that I don't have to compromise, so that I don't have to stop having fun, <laughs> you know? Instead of saying, oh, I can't afford to do this. I can't, you know, don't take the negative aspect. Like a lot of people go, oh, I don't have the money. I don't have the money. I can't afford this. I can't afford to go on vacation. I can't afford to do this. Instead of saying, okay, what can I do to bring more money in so I can do these things? See the difference? The energy is shift to, to the positive. Um, so you might be working on bringing in more money so you can do more things. And with Uranus in the second house, it gives unexpected opportunity. It wants to free you from feeling limited, you know, by Saturn. Mars is in Gemini. Um, where is Mars? Mars is in your third house and it's sextile Jupiter in your seventh. So this is a time to speak up. So if you're at, if you're working at a job and they're not paying you enough, it's time to speak up. If you're having, a, if you had any kind of falling out with relationships, it's time to communicate and work things out and straighten things out so that you can get on a better path. Um, it's time to take action the only thing is not to go over the top.
This is a general reading, so it may not apply to everyone. Um, so if you want a, real, a reading that, um, that is specifically focused on your life situation, click on the link in the description box. It will take you to my website. We can get you on the schedule, and um, we can have a reading. I have different price points, so you can afford uh, whichever one works for you. In the meantime, have an exciting August. Let the sparks fly. Change is, is coming. <laughs> and I'll talk to you again in September. Okay, thanks. Bye.